So uh, very briefly then to introduce the skills development aspects of uh, TACOs. Um, and uh, oh, I should also say that uh, the speakers, the list of speakers, unfortunately we aren't able to have Julian with us uh, today. So I will just be introducing Kenny uh, in a moment, who will be giving us uh, 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 information from a report that his consultancy, Landward Research, uh, uh, developed for English Heritage uh, last year uh, on the uh, skills gaps in the, in the sector. Uh, that I will then talk a little bit about uh, professional skills uh, development, uh, various other topics. So, just to introduce that, uh, a show of hands, please, for those in the room. Um, and uh, if you're online, I'm sorry, but you're, <laughs> you can always uh, tweet it. Let's see, how many of you graduated before 1994? Okay. And don't be embarrassed. How many of you graduated before 1984? Okay. Well, that, that's actually pretty much in line with uh, the profile of our profession. What I'm getting at here is that the skills to manage information are very new. Out of the existing workforce in 2013, 57% graduated before the introduction of the Netscape browser, which is one of the most popular web browsers in the, in the mid-90s. And... A quarter of us graduated, and I'm just about in that bracket myself, so um, graduated before the introduction of the personal computer. So you know, let's um, bear that in mind when we're thinking about the skills that we need uh, in the sector. They are very new skills, uh, so there are gaps not just in those coming through uh, the, the new generation, but also those existing, uh, those of us already in the workforce. Let's give some thought to that as well. Uh, I think that's um, all I want to say, to, by way of providing an introduction. Uh, these are the questions that we'll look at, at uh, when we get to the discussion uh, time. Uh, and I'll show those again uh, on the screen in a moment. Now, I think I will come back to you in a little while, but then first I would like to introduce uh, Kenny Aitchison. Uh, and uh, we will hear about the skills gaps uh, in the sector. I uh, left you. These are the questions we'll come back to uh, at the end. I'll show you a slide at the end. But uh, for those of you who are online, um, that uh, online question we're giving priority to is, is, is where did you get your information management skills from? Think about your own experience. Uh, I found this a very useful exercise a few years ago when I wrote a sort of little sort of potted autobiography in IT, which uh, I called... Uh, I remember when all this was green screens, which I thought was quite, quite clever. Um, uh, and uh, that went back to you know, the 1970s when I was thinking about, well, I was using uh, computer games. And what I learned from that was by controlling something on this uh, little controller in my hand, I could make something change on the television screen. And that's a sort of breakthrough moment. And so what I did was I went through those sort of moments in my own sort of previous work. And it is very interesting to sort of reflect on where I actually got those skills from. Some of it is through training courses, and Kenny sort of, um, sort of uh, uh, mentioned those, but some of it is more you just follow up things which interest you. So, and that might be uh, what we need, but is that adequate? These are the things we can discuss. So, uh, also in this session, uh, we're inviting you all to choose your own questions as well. Uh, we've given you three, but these are just there to start the discussion. So, if you think, well, the question we really need to answer is dot, 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 then by all means, write that down put it on the ether pads, and you know, we'll come to it later. So, um, what skills? Uh, th this uh, sort of tag cloud uh, was created at the first meeting of the Information Management Special Interest Group uh, uh, in 2010, and it was just an attempt to capture what are those things that interest the people who actually attended at that meeting. So there's, you know, it's, the point I'm trying to make is a, it's a rag bag of things. Uh, so we've got everything from uh, websites to databases to communication to archives to cake if you're uh, if you can see that in the top right hand corner we're not going to progress that one but it's a, it's a, a rag bag of skills um, so maybe what we're needing at this point is some kind of structure some kind of um, 
Kenny used the word granularity in trying to understand what it is that our skills requirements are. And of course, the good message uh, for us today to, to ponder is that we're not alone uh, in doing this. This is an issue for the whole of society. Uh, so there are, amongst others, uh, I'll just briefly look at professional associations, uh, what central government are doing, and what uh, qualifications infrastructure uh, that uh, currently exists, which might be able to uh, to help us. So let's you know, let's learn the lessons about learning the lessons. Uh, so uh, this is just taken from uh, the website of uh, SILIP, which is the Chartered Institute of Librarian and Information Professionals. We have a chartered member in the room today, so did I get that right? Almost. Oh, well. Close enough. Close enough. Okay. And what they're trying to do, or what they have done for their membership, is create a very detailed uh, map of the skills that you need uh, to be chartered within this institute or to develop yourself uh, as a professional. And uh, what I've got on the screen here is just uh, the high-level headings that, that, that you use. So organising knowledge and information, knowledge and information management, well, you can read them yourself. The point I'm making is it, it's a breadth of information. And I think it's only, uh, well, let me see. Yes, it's only right down at the last bullet point that you actually get IT showing up, uh, which is interesting. So and I think it's important to uh, bear in mind uh, the point that we're getting from here is that uh, the breadth of, of skills which are required to manage information in its broadest sense. So that's a, a professional association. There are others. The British Computer Society does a similar, uh, similar thing for those who have a more uh, hardware sort of uh, based sort of career. Um, the uh, central government obviously uh, wants to develop its own civil servants uh, in these areas, and there is a uh, what should we call it? A, sort of a special interest group, as it were, um, uh, tasked within the cabinet office with developing the uh, the digital skills of the civil service. Uh, so we can learn from some of the things that they're uh, putting online. So, for example, this is again from uh, the website where they portray what the the roles are. That, I mean, apologies for the sort of fuzzy image, but we've got things in the sort of core roles, the things like taxonomy. Uh, information architecture, records management, records reviewers, knowledge managers, information rights officers, and then sort of the more related skills are things like web managers, uh, researchers, analysts, uh, data sharing experts, and so on. So, another sort of source of inspiration for us. Again, another fuzzy logo. Apologies for the you know, just sort of taking this straight off their website. Uh, national Occupational Standards. Um, this is one which I've got a particular interest in. Uh, I think it may be part of the solution for us. Uh, uh, the National Occupational Standards is a, uh, a very, very broad uh, range of documents which define for a very uh, wide range of professions what it is that you need to know if you're going to be competent in that profession. And they underpin uh, a, a whole range of what I refer to on my earlier slide as the infrastructure. So they are not a qualification in themselves, but you can use them to design a qualification. And you can use them for a number of other things as well. But I'm, uh, uh, a prime motivation is that, that things such as um, any kind of work-based learning you know, can be based around a national occupational standard, if it's the right standard for your profession. Uh, and uh, as I said, a very, very broad range. What I'm trying to do here is this is taken from the website of the, uh, the where you can go to to search all of the uh, National Occupational Standards documents. They're all online. I will tweet or make a link available. Uh, but uh, this is, uh, if I did a search on that database for information management, and this is the whole range of different professions, types of jobs, and so on that, uh, that people uh, might have uh, a requirement for information management expertise, which is captured in a relevant national occupational standard. A printing machine minders and assistants, you know, ending, engineering service technicians, and so on, huge numbers. Fortunately, uh, well, yes, I say, this is the professions including uh, information management. Fortunately, again, uh, creative and cultural skills have uh, put efforts into developing NOS specifically to 
uh, archaeological practice. Uh, and again, I'm just running a, a search on their database for archaeological information archive. Uh, brings up uh, a number of uh, specific documents which define what it is if you're going to develop procedures for the use of archaeology information systems or disseminate, deposit, and archive data on the material, and it goes on to say, remains of human societies. What it is you need to know to be, as it were, competent in those areas. And then uh, an organisation such as the IFA uh, can then build a qualification uh, around that standard. So there's a lot of useful structure uh, out there. Just to uh, go into a little bit more detail about what you find if you search for uh, archaeology in that area, archaeological information management. Each of those, each of these documents, uh, they're all downloaded all as a, a PDF. Is a, a unit. It's, it's this sort of basic sort of um, a structure of a, of a national occupational standard. And so there are units covering these topics. Um, so I'm just one thing to think about. I mean, and I'm just throwing this out there immediate response to Kenya's presentation. Maybe this gives us the, the granularity, the, the, sort of the topic headings that we could use to analyse skills shortages under. Just one possible thought. Uh, so you have developed procedures for the use of archaeological information systems, develop information systems themselves to meet users' needs, and then classify, compile, maintain data on material remains intangible heritage. Uh, and then the final two provide information uh, and disseminate, deposit and archive data. So uh, a useful structure. Each of those documents, like I say, it runs through about sort of two to three sides of A4, a bulleted list of, you know, these are the things you need to know and this is the key knowledge that you need to have. So potentially very useful. Just to illustrate um, how these might be applied. Uh, we've spoken already about the need for uh, collaboration uh, in what we do. And uh, that's something which maybe, as you know, think about the whole heritage sector. Uh, on the left of this diagram, I have a little blue arrow reaching out to you know, other sectors. Uh, Victoria mentioned uh, um, archivists, but more broadly, uh, it could be web designs. Um, but if you have a structure for your skills, you've got a, a terminology, you've got a way of of exchanging information and talking to these other sectors. So I think that's a, a, a particularly the fact that NOS, the National Occupational Standards, have such a broad reach. This possibly gives us a, a useful uh, way to start to collaborate on uh, the skills we need. Uh, but it's also an organisational issue uh, for each of us as, uh, as uh, organisations within the sector. We need to think about how skills development can support uh, not just acquiring qualifications, but we can use them for recruitment. If you want to write a job description, well, the National Occupational Standard, that could give you a ready-made one there for you. If you want to manage somebody's performance as a line manager, it gives you a ready-made specification. Uh, and then, uh, as an individual, and Kenny made the extremely relevant point, I'm very glad you made that point because we haven't collaborated on our slides at all, but I'm very pleased that uh, my, my, my finding is, is the responsibility of the individual to pay attention to their career development, uh, seek recognition for the skills that they have, and going back to what I said right at the beginning, I acquired my skills through a pretty random process. I have absolutely nothing to document that, really. If I wanted to apply for a job in another sector, all I could, I could say, well, yeah, I'm quite good with computers, but I've got nothing I can show them. So if you want your continuing professional development, your career development, again, there's a, a, a valid, valid structure which we might be able to use. Uh, and this is just an example. This is taken from a, a, a presentation. I think it's by CC Skills, so I've, I've grabbed this slide off them. This is just using a national occupational standard, one of these lists of the competences you need in, a, in a, a continuing professional development context. So you choose a task which interests you. You identify the relevant uh, standard. You plan the task based around the, the definition. And you use the standard as a checklist. And then when you're finished, you, you, have, a, uh, you have a ready-made structure to evaluate your performance. So that's um, a practical example. As I said in the earlier slide, there's different places where it could be used as well. But uh, 
So the pitch I'm making is, is I think that this may be part of the solution. But of course that all relies on getting the national occupational standards right for our sector. And then building, if we want to build qualifications, we build qualification, or embedding activities such as this uh, using uh, the standards in our day-to-day uh, -day work. Ah, so, um, it's a final slide, if I remember rightly. Uh, I think this is my final slide. Um, it's just to emphasize again, it's more than just a technical skill. Uh, this is a, a, a bulleted list from a report produced by the Financial Times uh, and uh, a training consultancy um, on uh, the evolving value of information management. So why is information management as a society, as a, at a social level, why is this important? And what do those who think of themselves as information managers need to do? Uh, and those are the five key points which I think are, are probably worth bearing in mind. We've, we have got to communicate our value um, to those who don't necessarily see the, the value of information and information management. We need to understand the drivers of change, what things, what are the influences on the organisations and the sector that we work in, how can we, as those who work with information, uh, progress those objectives. We've got to manage processes, we've got to keep up on our technical skills, uh, and the bottom line is we've got to provide decision-ready information. So information and knowledge uh, all becomes real when it leads on to action. Uh, and that's uh, the thought that I think I'd like to leave you with. Thank you.